Good morning! Um, welcome to my channel. My name is Jessie Jagpal and today we are discussing coffee! Um, and not, I don't know how horrifying it, it's, it's gonna get, but that's the trend. So we're gonna try to make it as horrifying as we possibly can. Okay, so let's go ahead and br begin with the balloon popping before we can jump into the actual story. As you guys can see, I have two balloons left on my wall. After those are gone, I'm thinking about another type of balloon. I don't want to reveal. Um, I'm going to go ahead and purchase those on Amazon um, this weekend. And so by next week, hopefully I can start doing those. I think it'll be really cool. So let's go ahead and get started. Ready? One, two, three. Good morning! It is December, December, I wish, January 4th, 2019. It is 8.39 a.m. on this side of the world. Whatever this side of the world means. <laughs> okay, guys, so um, the worst coffee in town. Okay, so how do you how do you classify what is worst and what is great within your town? Is it based off of reviews online, from your past experience, bad customer service, disgusting ingredients, cold ingredients, you know, um, leftover stuff, chewy, not the right texture? How do you classify something as bad or good? And in case of coffee, how would you classify something as really good coffee and um, really bad coffee? Now, speaking of coffee, obviously, we, you know, there's been a lot of, um, a lot of bad rep for Starbucks, right? Um, in the news and amongst the general public that their coffee tends to be bitter. Why is it so bitter? Is it probably the worst coffee on the planet? Um, and you know the most branded obviously What makes coffee bad what makes it good just like any other food although Coffee can be compared to food although we may seem you know debate that option But over time even coffee goes stale, right? Um, if you leave um, coffee beans out for an extended period of time or even worse if they're grinded up and you leave them out it will go bad and the overall flavor of the coffee will go okay now I'm not a coffee enthusiast or whatever you may call it but I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between good coffee or bad coffee but um, some say that you know it's ba it's based off the geographical location right um, so if you're say for example um, Starbucks the bitter tasting coffee it may be popular in some countries so um, just as an example I don't know like maybe maybe in India like they they consume a little more bitterness in their coffee and they find that of superior quality um, where here in the States you know not so much like the bitterness may kind of um, put people off and say no that's so bad or so terrible I don't like it um, I personally prefer my coffee a little more sweeter. Um, I don't, it has to be a little bitter too, but mostly sweet. Um, Starbucks is a little too bitter for me personally. And so I would rate Starbucks as not the best type of coffee. Um, and then again, my choice of if I have to go out and buy coffee or even if I make it at home because I use a Keurig machine and most of my coffees are branded. <laughs> Yay! So I would typically go with um, Dunkin' Donuts. Um, and I don't know what type of roast this is because I'm not an expert on it, but I have found Dunkin' Donuts to be really good stuff. I've heard people complain about this coffee a lot too, um, but I mean, it just depends on what you prefer, okay? Um, but there is bad coffee, and if you've been drinking it for a very long time, you will be able to pick up on the taste, okay? I have had numerous encounters at Starbucks, our local Starbucks, where the coffee is so bad, okay? Um, my, my idea of really bad coffee 
is if it's cold if I ask for a hot brewed cup of coffee um, even if I ask for like almond milk or coconut milk or whatever in my coffee it should still be hot you know I know there's a lot of other barriers that keep them from making it nice and hot like being sued for one um, or like an individual hurting themselves which is probably the least of their concerns but it, it kind of kills that so I think you cannot, in today's day and age, here within the states anyways, not get a decent cup of coffee just because of that and their concern. So most coffees tend to be a little too cold for me. Um, another issue is that uh, the way they sometimes handle, you know, the coffee, like um, if I ask for, you know, two scoops of something, not understanding the exact content, um, we don't have control over a lot of factors within these um, chains. So like, you know, how long they're roasting their beans or, you know, just the overall process. Like we go to Dunkin' Donuts, we go to Starbucks, but we don't really know the process um of what went into it like how the beans were sorted how they were pulled out of the cherries um how how long they were fermented did you know uh, coffee beans were fermented like i want to know stuff like that because i think a fermentation is a huge part in adding flavor to your coffee um i know there's people that brew their coffee cold and they they know that stuff is really good it takes like hours to brew cold coffee and the end result is they'll get like this big um this much coffee out of it and they say it's like the best stuff you'll have all day that you'll get have energy all day really good stuff you know but the process is so long i i doubt starbucks and dunkin donuts go through any of that right we don't know how long the fermentation process has taken how long they had stored the product um the beans um and you know just how long they're roasting like i obviously like they'll give you those options at starbucks if you want you know mildly roasted dark roasted and you know lightly roasted um but even that it, unless you're doing it yourself is just it doesn't cut it right so it's an open-ended discussion everything actually everything is um most reviews online about any any coffee shop everything is usually personal opinion based off of a variety of different things although coffee can be bad and you know legitimately bad meaning it was sitting out for a long time it went bad and they um they're using this like coffee that was put out weeks ago there's no flavor to the coffee it tastes like dark water right or that leftover water when you're cleaning out your coffee filter or your coffee machine um that comes out if it tastes like that with milk and sugar it's bad stuff i think that's like my only justification to bad coffee um but yeah there's definitely a huge process that goes into um, making coffee and the amount of love and um, passion you put into it is it's what classifies it and is good and how you drink it and how your what your patterns and textures of that coffee not so much texture I don't think that's the right word the right flavors right um, and it's acquired um, it's acquired over time it's almost like um, like if you go to a pizza place, you're going to get the same pizza at the same restaurant. If something's off, you're going to be like, ew, like what's with their pizza today? Um, same thing with coffee. I think, um, the fermentation process is almost like, if, if it's from the same company, I assume the fermentation is probably very similar. The roasting process is very similar, like Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts. But if you're doing it yourself, or if it's from a smaller shop, if you're buying coffee from a smaller shop, the roasting um and if they're actually not buying prepackaged coffee and they're actually roasting themselves um the stuff should actually be really good yeah so <laughs> i'm surprised no one's opened a coffee shop here or anywhere i don't know correct me if i'm wrong if you have one in your town if you're located in somewhere in Europe and like known for coffee, I'm sure you guys have this, but 
where you have to pre-order your coffee just because it takes like two hours to prep it and then you get it special to go and it's like oh my gosh this is like the most amazing thing you've ever had does is that does that stuff happen anywhere let me know so some of the benefits of coffee is that it will cut pain so if you're feeling any type of muscle pain or workout pain it will reduce that I have noticed that in the past um, coffee has helped me run so it helped my cardio so if I drink coffee pre-workout it makes my workout a lot nicer true fact it increases your fiber intake so a cup of brewed coffee has about 1.8 grams of fiber which really helps your body overall um, protection against sir um, sir cirrhosis of the liver I, I don't think I'm saying that right um, so yeah lowered risk for type 2 di diabetes a coffee has a lot of good benefits guys it lowers the risk of Alzheimer's reduces the risk of suicide or depression um, protection against Parkinson's um, less risk for heart disease um, have stronger DNA interesting it says that a study published in European Journal of Nutrition showed that coffee drinkers have a DNA with stronger integrity since the white blood cells of the coffee drinkers had far less instance of spontaneous DNA strange breakage interesting um, lower risk of multiple I can't say that word, sclerosis, sclerosis, <laughs> um, it reduces colorectal cancer, risk for cholero, yeah, uh, less gout risk, um, reduced liver cancer, prevents blah 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 and etc so you can probably go google that I don't need to do the rest but again there is good and bad stuff when it comes to coffee too um go um search hold on give me a second guys I feel okay yeah go check it out go check it out um compare your local coffees um don't go to just a starbucks or dunkin donuts or brew it yourself like i do go to a local coffee shop and get their coffee and see what you think you know if you like it if you don't like it, if you hate it if you want me to shut up okay all right guys that's all i have for you today i hope you enjoyed this segment on horrors or hop coffee coffee which wasn't really a horror, I know, but don't I look horrifying to you? So it kind of makes everything horrifying. <laughs> okay, bye. That was bad.